Welcome everyone. So Anna here and we're going to be continuing on with our discussion of the central nervous system and we're going to be talking about part 9 where we're going to briefly go over the sensory functional areas that are associated with the cerebrum. Alright, so if you navigate in the learning modules to the class PowerPoints, you're going to find, as usual, the note slides. Whoops, wrong color. Note slides. I am not going to read these to you, so there's several of them in here, and um, you've got them. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and talk about the pictures. So here we are looking at the cerebrum. So this is a lateral view of the side of the the left side of the brain okay and it's really highlighting the cerebrum down here you have the cerebellum of course and down here is your brain stem okay so with the sensory areas what you want to first notice is the central sulcus which we looked at um, earlier when we were doing brain gross anatomy so the central sulcus is this cavern, you know, between the two gyri. Okay. Now in red we have the precentral gyrus, and in blue we have the postcentral gyrus, which is labeled right here. So with the postcentral gyrus, that's what you're looking for to get to the sensory sections of the cerebrum, the parts that specialize in sensory information. Now notice what they've done with the procentral gyrus, they've done it in a dark blue, and then the somatosensory association area they've done in light blues. Okay, They've highlighted some other sensory areas in blue as well. So you have the auditory region right here, and then the visual, this is the primary, and this is a secondary association area for visual information, which is also um, um, I don't know what I was going to say, so I'm just going to stop saying it, okay? We have two areas that are not colored on this particular view, so I've put circles on it. We've got the vestibular gustatory region, so remember you have to lift up right here in order to see the insula, and these are associated with the insula lobe, okay? And then right here at the base of your frontal lobe is a region for collecting olfactory information. All right, let's go on to the next slide. All right, again, note slides. We've got two of these to go over and give you information about your primary somatosensory cortex, the somatosensory association area, and then the visual areas. Okay, so this just gives you a little bit more information. And if you flip over to the second one, it goes over and it gives you this information. Now, what you'll notice is that <clears throat> All of these only have one to two bullets on them. They're really, really short, which means it's a lot less information than what you're going to find in your textbook or online or on Wikipedia or wherever you're else going, right? My tests are only going to cover what's on these PowerPoints. So focus on these when you're trying to decide what to memorize. All right, the visual cortex. So we've got a different picture here. Now they've colored it in orange and we're going to do this dark orange here for the primary visual cortex, and then a lighter orange for the association area. Okay, now this is all part of the occipital lobe, and in class I would normally do a discussion on this because this is an interesting area for people um, who have experienced coup, contra coup, um, whiplash injuries. So these are very common in car accidents, including roadside bomb accidents for our um, veterans who have been overseas. And basically you end up bouncing the frontal lobe off the brain case, off the, off the bones, and you end up bouncing the primary visual cortex off the back of the bone, causing damage, inflammation, all that kind of stuff. So if you damage the visual area, like you get kicked in the back of the head by a mule or you're in a roadside bomb and you have this whiplash um, coup contra coup injury. Your eyeballs, which are down over here, give them some eyelashes, isn't that creepy? All right, so your eyeballs are here. These still work, okay? You can still collect sensory information, but when the nerves come here and they deliver that information, 
your brain cannot tell that information has come in, okay? Now, if the association area is damaged, like with a, uh, a stroke over in this area, or maybe the, the injury to the brain was kind of off to the side, but the primary visual cortex is still okay, then what's gonna happen is the eyes will still work just fine, the visual primary area will still work, and you will still know that you're seeing stuff and processing it, okay? But when you get to the association area, you will not be able to understand what you have seen. You will not be able to process that information because the visual association area is where you do that. So you will know you are seeing something, but you won't understand what you are seeing. All right, let's go on. All right, the next several slides are my note slides from the lecture, all right? I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on these um, because you've got the notes. But, and we're gonna have a whole nother chapter on the special senses, although it's pretty condensed. So special senses, vision, hearing, balance, taste, smell, okay? All in the head, all right? Complex sensory organs. This is all you need to know for this particular chapter, all right? Uh, same thing for balance, which is equilibrium, and then you've got a little bit of information on taste and smell, all right? So that was your general, or excuse me, those were your special senses. All right, uh, where'd my glasses go? Um, here they are, okay. So let's talk about the general senses a little bit. So the general senses, so we talked about the special senses, vision, smell, all that stuff, and they've got really specialized receptors. The general sen sensors are gonna include things like touch, pressure, pain, stretch, movement, so that's your proprioception, heat, cold, I've already put in pain, um, <clears throat> and they don't necessarily have specialized receptors. So the receptors are just those <clears throat> typical ones, um, and some of them are encapsulated, like the Pacinian corpuscle, and some of them are not, okay? And <clears throat> they're going to be all over the place, okay? Typical receptors, they tend to be a simple structure but they can be encapsulated. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> so you remember from previous um, sections, we talked about those ascending tracks. The ascending tracks are gonna be the axons of those sensory neurons that have collected that information and are taking it up the spinal cord to usually, but not exclusively, the thalamus. Okay, so actually, let me kind of rewrite this. So you remember, you've got receptors, all right, and then that's gonna be collected in nerves, specifically sensory nerves. It's gonna hit the spinal cord. I'm just gonna abbreviate that SC. The spinal cord is gonna have ascending tracks and those ascending tracks are gonna go up to usually the thalamus, but it can go to other areas. But we're just gonna keep it simple um, because I don't wanna get into all of that. Um, remember, it is still contralateral, all right, because those things are gonna decuss that to roll. Okay, so it's going to go up to the thalamus, and then the thalamus is going to send it over to the postcentral gyrus and its primary somatosensory cortex. All right, and then from the primary somatosensory cortex, it will go to various association areas depending on what it's doing, okay? Some exceptions would be like the visual information which is gonna go from the thalamus to the visual primary cortex and then to the visual association area. So we've got some things that change up a little bit, okay? Um, <clears throat> All right, let's, um, let's look at the homunculus and then we'll be done with this particular mini lecture. So we've, actually, I don't know if I've, in lecture, I would have already done the motor one, but I think I haven't done that yet for the, these 
recording. So this is our sensory homunculus guy right here. So this is a very common drawing right here where you see the central sulcus and then this is the um, post-central gyrus and the primary somatosensory cortex. And what you see is this uh, somatotopy, okay, right here, somatotopy. This part of the cortex is going to do the genitalia, then toes, legs, torso, head, and then you notice a lot more uh, brain space is given over to the fingers and then a whole bunch to the face. The tongue is enormous. And then it goes into a little bit of uh, area for the sensory information coming from the abdominal viscera. Okay. I personally like the little homunculus guy because it's a 3D representation of what our bodies would look like if our body parts were the same size as the amount of sensory information we are collecting and processing in our brain. So you can see how enormous the hands are. You can see the lips are huge, the tongue is huge, the rest of the face is pretty small. The body, arms, legs are all like these swizzle stick thingies, okay? Um, which is kind of cool. I think it's a fun little thing to, to look at. All right, that is in it for looking at the uh, cerebrum sensory functional area. So pretty short and you can go on to the next video now.